Hi, Carol here and welcome to my craft room. We're going to carry on to do my practice sheet here before I start into my other cards that I'm doing and my project for my bestie stamp. And I thought it would be kind of neat to show you my thought process when I'm putting a card together really quickly. And w when you're thrift store shopping, a lot of people today are getting into um, thrift thrifting. And I look for these porcelain flowers that are chipped, especially on frames you can get for 50 cents so with all the porcelain on it because it's all chipped. But you can hide that. And on the coloring here that I started, but this is just a base so we can carry on with it. But isn't that gorgeous? Uh, to Porcelain flowers to put in with your uh, paper flowers and look for little hinges like this. It's simply beautiful on a card if you're going uh, shabby chic or vintage. These little frames at Michael's. And I make these out of um, my um, glue gun and I put them in the little, um, what are those little, uh, my mind just went blank. Uh, you know, for making buttons and um, you have the uh, polymer clay and you have the, you know, all the images. This is a flower image that you put the polymer clay in and you press down and then it dries in about an hour. Well, take your glue gun and put it in there and it dries in two minutes. And while it's in there drying into your little um, form, the little form, and uh, this one I added some silver sprinkles and look how pretty that rose came out and then I just stick a pin in the back like lay it on top of the form because this dries in two minutes seriously and then you can add your leaf and then t it pops out and you have yourself a beautiful rose look at that with your um, glitter inside and your pin is already on there and so is your leaf and that is with the little photopolymer clay molds they're called boy I'm glad that's coming back to me yeah so that's really cute and um, you know it doesn't matter what color you excuse me your metals are because all you do is uh, put some gesso over top of it and recolor it so I was grabbing a whole lot of little little things to do my card and I just wanted to share that especially with the photopolymer molds use your glue gun and you know all of those uh, you know you have tons of glue sticks and that's what made this in a mold and then you can use your glitter anything you want and you can use beads stick a bead inside there and let it dry because it dries and they pop out just like that yep my grandkids love that when I do that. <laughs> uh, I was just talking to my grandson on the iPad and oh, he just loves it when I make all those noises. So anyway, that's a thought. That's your tip of the day. Now, specialty papers. My very good friend, Jan Brumbelow. Uh Hi, Jan. She gave me a whole lot of papers. Uh, when I first started paper crafting, she is a gem. And they were these paper palette collage pads. They're homemade paper. I have four. Uh, two of them are underneath all my stuff over there, but I managed to get these out. Tell me this is not beautiful. Look at the stitching in this paper. Jan, I love, I hoard this. This is like one of the papers that I hoard. It's just absolute, and they're in, they're absolutely beautiful. And they're in the neutrals, the brights, the um this four pads that you gave me and can you see the beauty of this paper and homemade paper like that's totally awesome it's hard to find today so um look at that tissue so anyway i thought these two colors i got them out and you can tone them down when you're coloring look at how beautiful that pops up and right now I'm doing the outside of the card not the inside I'm preparing everything and I used this die when I start to prepare let me tell you 
Um, and you can do all shades, like I'm getting out all my papers. There's another specialty one. And look at that door. Isn't it beautiful? And tags, yes. And then, I don't know if you remember a haul I did, and I bought tons of these paper flowers in every color. I mean, every color. They were regular $18, and I got them for $8.93. So, um, I got a... I, I can't, I just got bought, I bought them up. I just bought as many as I could for it. And uh, so you want to prepare everything. Now, has anybody ever seen um, the uh, wire jig here? It has little pegs. And um, this is another tip if you're at the thrift stores. I bought up all of these. Um, little colored specialty wires. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at the colors in there. And I just kept them. I hoarded them. Oh yes. Until the day I could think of something to do with them. And then I remembered my, look at my little jig. My wire jig. And what you do is it comes, you get it at Walmart, Michaels, anywhere. It comes with your template and you draw from square to square flowers. I'm going to make uh, wire flowers for my card. And then you lay this on the template and I'll put a link to where you can get it. Very inexpensive. You can do wide flowers, you know, down the, I think that's quarter, uh, half an inch, an inch, no, half an inch, quarter of an inch and the tiny pegs. And you can do dogs, animals, cats, flowers. You just draw it out in your template. And I photocopy this and use it. This one I just keep uh, as a spare. So I'm going to do some wire art with my wire. And this goes down in here with that uh, hoarding. See, it, it's good to hoard. It's awesome because look at You get your little wee container and your wire jig is in there and off you go just creating so many wonderful things. Flowers is what I'm going to do with it. Now, I did some gates. Isn't this the most gorgeous die? And I ran the paper first, then my wax paper, and then my die. And I'm going to do these four thick. So I needed to have eight of them eight of these gates because I am going to line them up very carefully so that they're nice and thick. I like maybe two and two. I don't know. But isn't that absolutely scrumptious, these, this die? Oh, I love it. So I have, I'm ha getting that ready. And a whole lots of stuff going on. So let's carry on. I just wanted you to see when you put your image next to paper how precious that looks all right so let's see how far we have gotten I've got the glossy accents on the eyes and was there anything else I was going to show you there on this image I don't, I don't think so we're just going to quickly uh, do the 3d effect and I'm going to sit down <coughs> and sh show you this Let's get all my mess aside. Be prepared. Right, Jen? Be prepared. I'm not prepared today. I just sat down. And look at these beautiful specialty mats. This is homemade paper as well. It's, you, you just can't find, it's tissue. It's, it's tissue paper. Look at the beauty of this. Can you see that? Jen, I've hoarded this. You know how long. I think, look at this. Oh. I'm using that on my project. I got these specialty packs. So it's mulberry paper. 75 border and matting paper. Six and a half by four and a half inches. Oh, thank you, Jen. So this is how I do uh, after I get my image ready and I want to have a 3D effect without layering. What I do is I put my image. Can you see this? I turn it around and put it up to the light. And when you put it up to the light over here like this, let me see if I can move the camera and show you. When you have it up like this, see how I can trace that so easily up to the light? The reflection of that 
and then you want to take a pencil and do it like while you're holding it there to the light because it's just like using I didn't want to get out my uh, tracing box you know for that small image excuse me sorry so I trace it out with a pencil and let's hone in here all right and then we'll get to coloring really quick then you take your stylus and it's up to you which size ball you want to use I want to use the small one right away um, let's go with this my little ice cube trays over here all right let's show you on this one first Say you want to have a flower, any image, a butterfly. I think everybody's done this. You get your nice firm mat and you trace out what you want and then watch this without um, going too heavy at first. You can kind of tell with your paper weight how heavy you can press your hand into it and um, just going to show you how pretty this is. Put some veins in there. There we go. And turn it around and tell me that is not beautiful. Watch this. When you have that on there, and you just take a little, um, quickly Carol, let's uh, do, chalk looks beautiful. If you have your chalks and you wisp a brush across there, uh, let me take a distress ink really quick. I don't have a, yes I do, look at that. Take a little bit of this uh, evergreen bow, wow that's uh, heavy duty stuff. Let's go like this. And you can do a whole scenery on your picture by just look at that and look at the beaut look how much it is standing out there isn't that scrumptious I love it any image just grab I have a lot of the um, right here I just keep them by my desk all of the wooden I just trace them you get a whole bag of them at Michael's and then you can do backgrounds with your Copics and spray them so many possibilities with doing uh, this yourself, which is, you know, that's what we want to do, right? We just want to think up things where we don't have to be buying stuff, and yet we can get wonderful results. So that's one. Now, I take my image that we've been working on, my cutie patootie, and I turn it around. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've traced it up to the light, right? Now let's work on it. And I'm not going to press too firm at first. The last thing I want here is to go through my paper. And I want to prac I want to get coloring so um little sections I'm going to move up oh where's my other where's my Wilton cake thing oh this is great then when you get to the face use a bigger ball and okay trace it first with your small end and I like my arm to be prominent as well as the face And my nice flower and this is a practice sheet we had snow it's a snow machine there we are okay and then take a larger stylus and this is how you get the 3d effect without and then turn it around and check it oh. I love it. And you've already
you're just breaking the fibers up in here this looks so cute on animals I think you've seen a lot of cards I've done um, with animals doing this it's so unique and it gives you a nice look there I think I've cut the fibers enough I'm not going to break into my see this is where the Wilton large ball would come in so handy there we are my friends now I'm going to come up and show you that flower I want you to see this I hope you can let me see if I can get that on a mm. can you see it from that angle how much that stands up trying to get it for you it really does like if I put this sheet of paper up there you can see how much that's standing out this is something I guess you need to see uh, see how far indented I did that and really looks awesome quickly just do this arm so I can show you with the arm there you go look at that Can you see how much that stands out? I wish it could. It's so hard to tell. But once we do the hair here, you will really see it stands out. When you feel it, it it's absolutely beautiful. It looks like you put another layer on top and glued it. So here we go. Let's do this dress. And would you like to see the dress? Well, I thought I'd show you folds. I can do a, a, a page two. Uh, we'll do folds. The colors that I chose are G2O, YG21, GO2, BG00, G21, G000, YG11, and Y000. Let me just show you the goodness right here. Right there. Yes. Let me use your greens. Add some blues in there. It just looks beautiful for texture. So let's start in with. I want. I have to wet it again. So I'll do the G two O. Okay. So we'll add that on here as a base. I'm leaving some white space. This is just to get it wet for me. And see how you have the, can you see the blues hues in there? You don't want to stick with one color. Let's just wet this up. That's why it's good to have a good cardstock like the Gina K 120 pound luxury cardstock. Or if I remember to leave a link to her, you can get free shipping if you're in the States. And then BG000. Get some shading underneath and my main color is to have the green and I am working on this mat which is throwing my eyes off I want it on here there we go oh, I wish you could see how this is and popping the eyes out oh it's wonderful okay let's do let's do the, the lines first okay so I'm going to do it with the G02 all right, so we want to have just draw little uh, looks like upside down tees for golfing. Okay, so come down here like this. She's already given you, Sherry's already given you some lines to work with, which is awesome. Bring it down. Now, I want to have some folds here, so upside down T golf tees and see how the little bumps let me zoom down somehow I've got to get you to see that um, the, how far up 
that face sits in that arm. Just looking at it. Okay, let's zoom in on the dress. There we are. So it's upside down tees with the GO2. See how it has these frills on the bottom? These little frills like this. There's one that goes up. Take advantage of it and use your point of your marker like dead on and make a little upside down T. Come across here and upside down T. Keep going. I have to make sure I see. And then there's a little wee fold here. You have this to work with. I'm going to pass that and come up and make an upside down golf tee. That's exactly what it looks like. An awesome golf tee. There we go. And flow with the dress. Like the dress is it, for movement. Just move with it. And we're coming across here and we can add one there. All right, so you have that already. Now I might want to go a shade darker. So this is a G02. Let's jump up to a G07. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's better. That's good. You could tell once you once you get your little T's down, try and get the point at the top. Don't you love coloring? Oh, it's so peaceful. Okay, and then come down with your T, you know, golf T. I'll drive you nuts saying it, but this is how I get folds. There's probably a thousand ways if you look on on the net. I visualize, you know. And then my next video I will there, isn't that pretty? Now so we have that. Then I will jump to the O2 and go right alongside like this. That one a tad crooked, so... Okay. Lighten it up some more. I'm going to do a G, Y, G11 to get those marks out of there. And it gives you to the yellow tone. So it pulls. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to leave some light up there. At the same time, you don't want and you can darken it up again, which I will do. Let's see how much time I have. Okay, we're getting there. Now I'm going to take a uh, YG21 and come alongside of that even. The saturation is what helps. You don't want to have um, all these lines. Yet you do. You know what I mean? You do and you don't. Okay, and then take out your uh, G Oh no, I'm switching over. The B000. Okay, and then just flick down. Up. Those lines. Then 
and we're going to put those harsh lines back in, believe it or not. We're just going to get a little bit of that yellow out. Isn't that pretty? Oh. And then I'm going to go back with the GO2, I think. Get those lines that are already there. Let's do a little bit up there. This is such a pretty image. And let's get our golf tees in here. We don't want to lose that. So pretty and I just want to show you because I know I don't have much time I'm not going to get into this because I'm going to do the hair up here so I won't touch that for now look at that face stand out it's a good sixteenth of an inch all right let's get uh, where are we here I have that much but I want to add some um, Excuse me a minute, is this what I'm looking for? No, this isn't. Here's what I'm looking for. Enamel accents, okay? I want to see. Okay, let me grab a piece of paper. And... Go over all of these dark... dots. I don't want it to be black and if I do I'll take my multi-liner and I'll draw around them when this dries but I need to see how much of the actual folds. I'll just do this side and show you what I mean on here. And I want to thank you. I'm going to have a really nice giveaway this week over on my blog. I'm going to do gift certificates I decided on. Do these different sizes. Okay. And then I am going to take a B14 on this side. I'm going to show you. I want to darken some of this green up before I go in with more dots. You have to be careful there. It's my practice sheet so I can show you. Okay, let's come up here. Oh, my time is leaving. I want to show you this. Okay, I'm going to go into part two so we can finish this up. Look at that beautiful face. And we are getting there. Isn't that pretty? I'll finish up while we're here. And I started the socks. But um, I am going to do some glittering in here. But that last one was a B14. I will put all of the colors because there is a lot of colors here. Look at lots. Lots. 